In last class, I have discussed details about welding symbol. Today, I am going to deliver a lecture on welding power sources. Before going to details about welding power sources, first of all, we should know why power welding power source is required and uh, what are the first of all we should know what, uh, what is different electric discharge. Here especially today I will discuss about the uh, power sources especially uh, the electric arc power uh, electric arc welding power sources I will discuss in this. Uh, first of all here detailed content of this today's lecture. Uh, first there will be the introduction of welding power source then there will be the categories of different welding power source. Then uh, here I will discuss about the what is open circuit voltage, what is the detailed history of power sources and at the end about each individual power sources I will discuss briefly about all power sources. Now first of all for going to details about this electric arc welding power sources here first of all we should know what are the different types of electric discharge? The electric discharge is categorized into three different categories that is electric discharge generally categorized into three different categories. First categories we can say high voltage very low current electric discharge. There can be a electric discharge which can have very high voltage and very low current, very low current. Will, uh, this type of electric discharge can be there. this high voltage can be some thousand volt, can be some thousand volt that means it is a range of kilo volt and this very low current it is a range of in micro ampere. Uh, the second categories can be medium voltage medium voltage which have a range of 100 volts and it can have low current which can have a range of milli ampere. And third category selected discharge can be due to low voltage that is a range of tens volt actually and high current, the high current that is a range of ampere in the range of ampere. So, you see depending upon this uh, three different types of current and voltage uh, there can be developed three different types of electric discharge. This first category which have very high voltage and very low current this categories is called a spark discharge this is called a spark discharge this medium voltage and low current this generally this categories is called glow discharge and this third category in this category this is called arc discharge so we see that generally this a spark discharge which is a non sustainable that means it is not sustained. This glow discharge it is this glow discharge is sustainable and arc discharge is sustainable, but this glow discharge cannot generate a current or voltage which is required for to melt the weld piece and uh, do the welding operation. That is why this arc discharge is very much essential for doing welding of this arc discharge which is sustainable and this is generally used for joining of uh, metal. Uh, by welding process. Generally this arc discharge here what are the things we are getting here? We are we are get required low voltage high current, but actually what we have seen then, then from here itself we get a idea that why a electric power source is essential. A electric power source is essential because generally whatever the domestic current or do domestic power supply we are getting that domestic power supply generally does not create low voltage high current. Generally domestic power supply current and voltage range generally here the low current opposite thing happen. Generally in domestic power supply this opposite thing happen whatever the thing required for arc discharge here opposite thing happen. That is here domestic power supply there is very low current uh, this current range within a range of 5, 5 ampere 
and it has very high voltage, high voltage in the sense it can uh, have a voltage from 240 to 480 different types of this types of range of voltage is there. Sir, but especially uh, we need low opposite thing, whatever the domestic power supply uh, current and voltage we need its opposite thing. That means for welding or arc discharge to generate arc which is suitable for doing welding, here we need generally low voltage high current. That is why generally a power source is very much essential. So, we got an idea to do the welding a power source is required. Okay, let this is the power source. Why this power source is required? By this power source only we can generate a arc which is suitable in between the work piece and electrode. Let this is power source, this power source can be either AC or DC. Power source can be either AC or DC. To generate a arc discharge, this is called generally electrode, electrode, this is generally called work piece, work piece. To generate a arc like this types in between the electrode and work piece to generate a arc, what is the thing required? We need a separate power source. That means, this power source, this power source can be either AC and DC. This power source will be connected to main supply or main supply or we can say domestic supply or this is sometimes called utility line supply utility lines supply. So, this is sometimes called main supply or utility line supply. This power source is connected with the domestic power supply and so in between this welding arc and uh, domestic power supply there should require a power source. Why this power source is required? Because this power source only can uh, generate the required voltage and current. and current that means required voltage or current or we can say that desired voltage of current which is required for welding operation. And this arc should be established in between this electrode and arc piece. So, that this arc should generate a temperature which should melt this parent material or you can say this work piece so that uh, we can we can do the welding operation in any material especially which is weldable. So, why power source is required we understand, power source is required because domestic power supply generally cannot supply the required voltage or desired voltage or current which is required for welding operation. Generally what this power source do? This power source convert 240 or 480 volt main supply or UT line supply power to 20 volt to 80 volt power supply. That means, here if the input is 240 or 480 volt, here the output is generally 20 to 80 volt. And here this power source, sometimes this electric power source can be from electric source itself and this power source also sometimes can be motor generator power source. That means, motor generator power source. This motor generator is designed uh, in such a way so that it can create a voltage or current which should generate a arc which is required for welding operation. So, this power source for arc welding either can be motor generator types or can be from electric supply or can be from electric supply from electricity. Now, we will see what are the different categories of power source. Uh, what are the different categories of power source? Now, we will see this conventional welding power source is categorized into four different categories. One is called welding generator, here its output supply is either alternating current or direct current depending upon the type of generator. If the generator is DC type, then it will uh, supply DC current. If it is AC type, then it will provide alternating current that is AC power. Now, this second category is called welding transformer. This is wrong actually, this welding transformer generate alternating current, AC current. Whereas, this then third, third category is called welding rectifier, it provides the DC current. And the third categories of welding power source is uh, inverter type, these provide direct current. 
So, what we have seen there can be four different type, type of welding power source, one is welding generator which can provide both AC or, or DC uh, depending upon the type of generator, welding transformer which generally uh, provide the alternating current, welding rectifier provide DC current and welding inverter provide DC current. Now, first of all before going to details of different welding categories and history of welding process here one important thing in case of power source we should know that is called open circuit voltage. Now, what is open circuit voltage? This open circuit voltage generally represented in terms of OCV that means O for open, C for circuit and V for voltage. This open circuit voltage means let us this is a power source uh, P s I am representing power source from here it is connected to a electrode this is the work piece here this is the electrode. So, this is the output terminal actually in between this work piece and uh, electrode this arc we have to generate we have to generate the arc for doing welding. So, what happens what is open circuit voltage if there is no arc in between this uh, electrode and work piece at that time that means when no load is connected to the output terminal of the welding power source that means if there is no welding operation or no arc at the output terminal of the welding power source then whatever the voltage is recorded at this time that voltage is its maximum voltage as that means whatever the voltage we are getting when there is no load uh, in between this work piece and electrode at that time whatever the voltage will appear in this output terminal that voltage is called generally open circuit voltage. And what is welding voltage? Welding voltage means if we start this arc in this arc region whatever the voltage drop will be taken place that voltage is called welding voltage. Here one thing we keep it in mind generally open circuit voltage uh, is higher than the uh, welding voltage. Generally welding voltage magnitude is far lower than the open circuit voltage. Why open circuit voltage re required is more because uh, a high open circuit voltage use in arc starting and arc stability. If the open circuit voltage is more then we can generate this arc easily and if the open circuit voltage is more then this arc also become stable in nature. In case of a transformer if this power source is a transformer time then this open circuit voltage that means no load voltage actually of this power source within a range of 70 to 90 volt for transformer. Whereas, in case of a rectifier this magnitude normally within a range of 50 to 80 volt. However, whatever I have told you this welding voltage that means this voltage difference between this electrode and this work piece whatever the voltage difference we are getting this voltage welding voltage generally uh, is very low compared to this open circuit voltage. Now, we will go to that what is the historical development of different welding power units. This uh, first welding power unit was developed in 1910 that was actually a type of welding motor generator. Uh, here generally there is a electric motor and there is a generator. Here is a electric motor and here is a generator. So, it produces either AC current or DC current. So, this was developed in 1910. This power unit is called welding motor generator welding power unit. By this we can get a electric arc which have a power supply which, which have a output supply is either alternating current or DC current. This is depends on uh, upon its generator. Then after around 10 15 years the second categories of welding power source is developed that is in 1920 that is generally called welding transformer welding transformer it convert this main supply that means it generally this convert this main supply or we can say that utility sub domestic supply uh, to uh, low voltage high current and this generally convert AC current that means utility current into AC current alternate here generally output is alternating current. Now, here one thing you keep it in mind here what types of uh, transformer there is used for uh, welding power source always keep it in mind in welding power source from Faraday's law what we know generally what is transformer. So, in a welding transformer it generally convert this high voltage low current into low voltage high current and its output is AC in nature. 
Then after that means ar around after 30 years this third category welding power source is developed that is called welding rectifier. It developed in, a, in the time of 1950. Here the, what it is do? It convert the alternating current from transformer, the welding rectifier consists transformer, it consists a diode circuit, diode and inductor circuit. The inductor symbol sometimes like this, sometimes other symbol also is used. This is what? This is a transformer, this is generally diode and this is inductor. And here the output is direct current, here generally output is DC current. So, welding rectifier was invented in 1950. First of all this main supply high voltage low current is converted to low voltage high current by using a transformer. Then this low voltage high current AC output is there. This AC current once it put through this diode and inductor, then it converted this thing into DC current. Diode is a switch which can allow one directional current flow. It provides only one directional flow. Here generally reverse current flow is not allowed. Uh, for converting this alternating current to DC current, here this system, this diode inductor, this system is called uh, welding rectifier. Here AC current we can convert to direct current. Now this inductor also allow DC current, once it converted that means inductor generates is block AC current. Once it act like this that means it is block AC current and allow DC current, then this inductor uh, at that time it is term as a choke, it is act like a choke here inductor. So, this is welding inductor, uh, it is generally provide a DC current. Then the third category is which is called thyristor control rectifier. Thyristor control rectifier is similar to welding this, this welding rectifier, here except that thing that means except that diode, here generally use thyristor. That means this after this transformer a set of this is the symbol of thyristor actually. After that there is a inductor, this is a inductor. So, here generally instead of this diode thyristor is applied generally to convert this here the output also is DC current, direct current. Now, you can uh, you can think actually what is the difference between this diode and uh, thyristor. Generally diode is diode can operate in any particular voltage, but this thyristor generally operate for a rated current and rated voltage and rated signal. Actually thyristor is operated, so here you can think what is the difference between this diode and thyristor. Thyristor it is same as diode, but the difference is it will, it will be switched on at a rated voltage and signal, it is switched on at a rated voltage allow rated voltage and signal. So, here generally voltage and signal both thing is required, but in case of diode generally diode can operate at any particular voltage, here generally it is not rated voltage uh, and here signal is also not required in case of diode, but in case of thyristor signal as well as rated voltage is required. That means prescribed voltage and uh, signal both the things is required. This symbol generally is called its gate symbol actually gate, here a extra element is this, this diode is a generally one end device and this thyristor generally is a three end device. This diode is a one end device, this diode. Uh, this is generally a three end device. So, this thyristor control provide a uh, DC uh, output which is comparatively better than the welding rectifier recti 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 power source. It is generally comparatively advanced types of power source compared to the welding rectifier one. Or, or you can say this the fifth categories that means fifth types of power source which was invented in 1980. Uh, this is inverter generally these power source uh, this uh, welding transformer, welding rectifier, thyristor it has seen this power source generally have heavy weight and its performance comparatively he heavy weight that means it is not a portable on. But inverter type is a, a power source where its size and weight is uh, here it is reduced uh, tremendously compared to this welding rectifier or transformer types. 
how this is happened that I am just uh, what is the details of welding inverter little bit details here I am explaining after that details about all the things I will explain in uh, subsequent slides. Like inverter its consists is first convert this utility it first convert this main supply to DC first convert the main supply to DC first this main supply in a in a inverter this low frequency generally this utility line frequency within a range of 50 hertz. So, this utility current or utility power supply first converted to DC then this low frequency DC current is transferred to high frequency this low frequency DC current from here first we convert this uh, main supply into low frequency low frequency DC current then this DC current we convert to high frequency high frequency this frequency range is varying from 5 to 100 kilohertz frequency how this we generally we convert this this uh, 5 to 100 kilohertz how we are converting this low frequency to uh, this uh, 5 to 100 kilohertz ac current or ac power supply then how we are converting this we are converting by a by a device generally this device name is called semiconductor or this is called transistor transistor so what here happen here this low frequency that means low frequency that, that means 50 hertz main supply is converted to DC then this DC is converted to AC alternating current by high frequency that this is converted to high frequency alternating current then this alternating this high frequency alternating current further converted to DC current by diode and or you can say diode circuit the here actually I am showing this only one diode actually to convert this thing there is there can be required a bridge circuit of diode. So, generally this diode further we use here to convert this AC current to finally DC current. So, here is diode is used and the inductor is used. So, this is inductor. So, here what are the extra things here required in, in case of inverter? In case of a inverter there is a transistor and a diode system prior to a rectifier that means whatever the things available this is a rectifier because in a rectifier there is a transformer, there is a diode circuit and inductor. But what happens in case of a inverter there is two extra element is required because here what is done here generally this low frequency that means this 50 hertz low frequency we first converted to high frequency AC by a transistor or you can say by a semiconductor. Then this high frequency AC further we converted to direct current DC. So, as this 50 hertz for 50 hertz whatever the power source will be if this size is uh, the within a range of kilo hertz then this size is reduced proportionally whatever the thing required for 50 hertz frequency. Generally it has uh, it has seen if the frequency increase then we can reduce the uh, transformer core size and uh, inductor core size that means whatever the core is used for uh, inductor or surface area is used for inductor and transformer that we can reduce by increasing the line frequency. That is why here in, in, in case of inverter we can reduce the size and weight. Uh, tremendously by providing a tra transistor in front of this rectifier system. Now, we will explain in details about uh, welding motor generator then welding rectifier welding uh, thyristor control rectifier in subsequent slide. First of all this motor generator, this motor generator said uh, briefly I have uh, already explained about motor generator, but here uh, we should know what is a motor generator, where is the application of motor generator, how it look like, why it was required that we should know. Motor generator set were popular for many years because what happens earlier times when there was no electricity that time to do the welding generally this motor generator set was used to generate required voltage and current for joining material. 
And nowadays, uh, once this electricity and other things uh, developed, then uh, then this motor generator uh, uh, means motor generator popularity reduce a lot. Generally, this motor generator uh, it has high cost and poor efficiency. That that's though it uh, it has high high cost and poor efficiency. That's why it's difficult for them to compete with modern modern welding technology. However, their welding characteristic that the motor generator welding characteristic can be excellent. That means it motor characteristic can be excellent, but its efficiency is very less. Generally, this motor generator consists a motor and this motor is directly coupled to a DC generator. How it looks like little bit I am showing here. This is the circuit of a motor generator. The little bit I am explaining actually why this is required because once you will be in, in industry there you will see you have to means know all this uh, all the things what is uh, power source because if you have basic idea about all this uh, welding power source then uh, you can apply your knowledge in industry as well as in research purpose also because this is the very basic thing which is very much essential part to know welding in details. If you know these things, then only your fundamental and other things will be uh, good. That is why I am explaining here little bit in details. Now, here you see this is called electric motor, this electric motor and this is generator. This generator generally either can be DC or AC, this is depends on this thing. So, from here this terminal is connected to workpiece and this terminal is connected to electrode and finally, a arc is generated here. Now, so here what is the thing say generally this is a three phase motor, this is main supply or this is sometimes called utility supply. So, so this motor is electric motor is connected to, to this motor can be electric, uh, electric motor or petrol diesel operated motor this this motor is connected to the generator so what happens uh, the, the from this generator we can get a desired voltage and current which is required for welding operation this power source that means motor generator power set consists a electric or petrol diesel generated motor and a generator nowadays actually uh, compare with other electrical power source this uh, use is very less then also this motor generator set also popular especially when the welding is required at site where lack of electricity is there, there generally this motor generator set is essential. Now we will go one by one welding with AC power source. AC power source is a popular choice because uh, it is a very simple and inexpensive power unit. But here the main problem is. Uh, as this uh, AC power source convert AC power source generate alternating current. So, after each cycle that in a in it is particular current cycle that means here AC current output generally look like this. So, here for a particular cycle here there is a zero crossing that means zero crossing means where the current is uh, become zero. In this location then the current become zero. So, once current become zero then there there will not be any arc. So, uh, in every cycle of this AC power there will be a extinguish of arc is there. For that reason for AC power source to reignite this power in a AC current very high voltage that means high open circuit voltage is required. To start further this uh, arc a voltage is required which should be comparatively higher, higher magnitude. For that at least in a uh, AC power source this uh, open circuit voltage for to ignite the arc actually or to start the arc at least 50 volt open circuit voltage is required. But it has a advantage, this uh, AC power source has a very big advantage as every cycle it crosses 0, so here chances of magnetic arc blow is not there. That means risk of magnetic arc blow is very less actually here we can eliminate we can say because here this magnetic flux cannot build up and its magnitude cannot increase in higher and higher side that is why here chances of this magnetic arc blow is not there and another thing by this AC current uh, we can get a very interesting performance here this AC current used to break the oxide for some reactive types of material because once we go for doing reactive material welding especially aluminum, magnesium, 
if we go for doing uh, welding on aluminum, there we have seen the aluminum is a very reactive material. Once it is exposed in open weather, then immediately some oxide layer is formed. Oxide layer means generally oxide layer is like Al 2 or 3, alumina generally form. This alumina is a refractory material. So, once it forms, if it is mixed with welding region, then this will create a defect. That is why this alumina we can break if we use alternating current, because alternating current have both positive and negative part. Generally, in case of alternating current, this positive car, positive part of alternating current which helps to break this oxide. So, here the chances of uh, this means inclusion or uh, defect is less if we use alternating currents. So, then in case of AC currents, what we have seen? There is some drawback. What is this drawback? The drawback is in each cycle there is a there is a extinguish of arc is there. But here what is the advantage? Advantage is here this power source it almost eliminate the magnetic arc blow as well as good, good oxide breaking capability. This power source, AC power source popularly used in uh, SMAW and TIG welding. SMAW means shielded metal arc welding and TIG means tungsten inert gas arc welding. Now, we will see what are the different types of AC power source. We have seen this uh, simple AC power source is a simple transformer. This simple transformer generally used for SMAW, and this output is what I have already is a, is a sign types of curve is there. Here we have seen there is every cycle there is a uh, zero crossing is there. Okay. Every cycle there is zero crossing, due to this zero crossing in this time there will not be no current or no output. So, in this position on the cycle will be that time the arc will extinguish. So, arc will extinguish. Then also it is popular what I have already explained that is why to reignite this thing it has some high open circuit voltage is required. So, first is a simple transformer generally used for welding purpose especially for SMAW we can use this types of power source to do the welding operation. Then some advanced types of uh, AC power source is there. What is this advanced type of AC power source that I will explain in details. Here for advanced types of AC power source also used a transformer, but in this transformer there is a control for current adjustment. This current adjustment we can do by varying the inductance or by changing the magnetic coupling between primary and secondary uh, secondary winding of the transformer. That means, this current adjustment uh, for this AC power source we can do two way one is by varying the inductance or by changing the magnetic coupling between the primary and secondary winding of a transformer. One thing here uh, you should keep it in mind uh, you should know actually what types of transformer generally used in case of uh, welding purpose. Here, what types of transformer we should use here? Here, we use in case of a transformer, there is little bit fundamental things you should know because what should be the transformer type here we should use for welding power source. Let this is a transformer, this is NP means number of turn in primary circuit and this is let us number of turn in secondary circuit, okay. number of this NS, number of turn actually coil turn. This now, in case of a transformer generally from Faraday's law, little bit idea I am giving here, Faraday's law little bit idea I am giving because we, we should know what types of transformer generally required to use uh, in case of a welding power. So, Faraday's law what it is tell Vp that means is directly proportional to Np and d phi by dt where this phi, phi is the magnetic flux per unit turn. And so, here what we have seen? V s voltage at secondary circuit will be N p N s into d phi by d t. This relationship we got from Faraday's law. So, what we have seen? This primary voltage and secondary voltage, this is depends on this primary number of turn and secondary number of turn N p by N s. So, this is very interesting relationship. So, what we have seen here? We have seen generally this voltage is directly proportional to, to number of turn. Here what we have seen? This voltage is directly proportional because Vp 
is uh, top side and NP is also top side. So, VP is V and voltage is directly proportional to generally number of turn from here we are getting. So, in case of a secondary circuit, what should be the number whether this NS should be high or NS should be less because we want low voltage. So, here what we are what we are doing? We are doing generally high voltage to low voltage. Transformer generally convert high voltage to low voltage or low voltage to high voltage. Due to this power conservation, current also change because uh, from power con con conservation here generally uh, if uh, voltage is increased, generally current will be decreased. If current voltage is decreased, then current will increase because we know power is equal to voltage into current. Conservation of energy means power should be constant. So, what happens if voltage is increased, then current will decrease. If voltage is decreased, then current will increase. So, in case of welding power source, what are the things required? In case of welding power source, this secondary number of turns should be less than primary number of turn because here we want this output voltage uh, let this is input voltage this output voltage should less than this input voltage here the output voltage should less than this input voltage then only we can get a electric arc for that reason if this vi is greater than to get this lower uh, voltage output generally number of turn in secondary circuit should less as here voltage is reducing this types of transformer is called a step down transformer. Some other types of transformer is also there that is uh, convert this low voltage to high voltage. So, here some sort of voltage is increasing. So, this types of transformer is called a step up transformer, but always keep it in mind in welding generally our things is required we have to decrease the voltage. So, that is why here we should use a step down transformer. So, a step down transformer now this a step down transformer used for AC power source then uh, how the current is controlled here in this AC power source this current is controlled by some reactor actually. What is the function of reactor? The function of reactor is to change the inductance of the power unit. So, what happens for that reason? Generally, in case of AC power source, there we will get three different types of reactor which is used to change the inductance of the power source. By changing the inductance, we can control the required current and uh, required output actually required current. We can control the required current as well as required output. For that, generally this AC power source depending upon the reactor is categorized into three different categories. One is called tap reactor in this reactor generally tapping circuit is used. Another one is called moving core reactors and uh, third one is called saturable reactor. All this AC power source used either SMAW or GTAW that means shielded metal arc welding or gas tungsten arc welding process. Once we use these types of power source with this reactor then we can control the current output as per our requirement. Generally, the choice of this power source depends on its cost and its performance. It has observed that among these three reactor, the most uh, costly reactor is saturable one. This is more costlier, but its performance also comparatively better than other two reactor. That I will explain in details in subsequent slide. First of all, TAF reactor. This reactor generally consists of a copper cable on owned on a laminated core that circuit as well as copper cable I will show you the winding is provided with a tapping circuit. Here only a limited number of setting can be accommodated. Why a limited number of setting can be accommodated that also I will show you. Here how the circuit is look like first of all we should know generally a tapping circuit it generally look like here is a transformer is there. How this power unit is look like? There is different tapping. So, another terminal connected to the workpiece. From this tapping, one terminal is connected to the arc. Here, a arc is there. This is called tapping reactor. So, how it look like? Here, there is main supply this is the transformer 
and this is a reactor. This reactor actually how it look like? This reactor consists a laminated iron core with tapping, laminated iron core with tapping. How the tapping is there? That I will show you. Here tapping is made like this. So, by changing this position, that means this position, we can control the current by this reactor. This is from transformer transformer output is goes through this laminated iron core. In this tapping region, this arc is the input is from this stacking, this output is taken to the arc. There is always every welding process, there is a earthing is there, always keep it in mind. So, this types of tapping reactor, this is a laminated iron core which is wounded by a copper, this is a copper wire actually, this is a copper wire, this is called tapping. So, by changing the position of this output, we can control the current here. So, these types of generally tapped reactors, we is used for AC output with control current. Now, second category is called moving core re reactor. So, in moving core reactor, which is similar to this power unit moving core reactor is similar to that means circuit is similar to that tap reactor except that here is a moving core is there this reactor is which has a moving core that I will show now actually how it is look like what is moving core look like. So, this is it is connected to the arc. So, here moving core how it is look like? Here generally increasing and decreasing of the inductance of winding is done by moving a laminated core in or out through a reactor. What is this laminated core? How it is look like? That we should know. Generally a laminated core, generally this reactor, it is actually a laminated core which is generally moving in or out. How the laving, laminated core is look like? this is output to arc. That means, it is connected to like this. This is generally laminated core, this is reactor winding, reactor winding. So, what happens due to this movement of this laminated core in or out, the moving this laminated core that means, this laminated core in or out, we can control the uh, required uh, current output which is required for welding operation. Saturable in this design also similar types of things is there, what means that means here also a current control device is there, this current control device is a uh, saturable reactor. How the saturable reactor? Saturable reactor generally putting in a secondary circuit. How it looks like? Little bit I am showing actually the circuit diagram of this power source. Here is also similar circuit diagram. Here is also similar circuit diagram. This here reactor is called saturable reactor. Here we can do current control this saturable reactor generally put in a secondary circuit. Now, the, this reactor has comparatively uh, other two reactor, this reactor has better control and this reactor, this, this welding power source we can control remotely also. This AC power is comparatively costly than the other two reactor power source unit. Some other AC power source also is used that is called multi operator set power source. Multi operator set power source means this types of uh, transformer generally can provide 3 or 6 outlet at a time. That means, from a single transformer, we can get either 3 outlet or 6 outlet at a time. Here one thing we should remember for every outlet there is provided a separate reactor. So, so every outlet there is a separate reactor. For every outlet, we can control the current as per the requirement of that particular uh, outlet. 
So, here in this case the current in each secondary circuit should be independently controlled and a separate reactor must be included in each lead. So, this all about the AC welding power source, series different reactor control power source we have seen. Nowadays generally also we get some other advanced types of AC power source. This AC power source is controlled by either thyristor or transistor. Generally by using this thyristor and transistor here we can get a output which have a square wave switching technology. In this types of power source we can have a square wave switching technology there that means here we can get a output which is instead of uh, sinusoidal output here we can get a, a square wave instead of sinusoidal wave here we can get a uh, type of a square wave by using a, a square wave switching technology. This types of AC power source generally eliminates the peaking and here it is provide a rapid transition through 0. This types of power source generally what happens here the output is how it is look like this. That means, in, its, in, in case of normal transformer, transformer types of AC power source here we are getting there is a peak and here slow transitioning of 0 is there. But here the a square wave forms here 0 crossing is very here it is not taking time at all, its time is almost eliminate here 0 crossing. So, if we can eliminate this 0 crossing time then what happens here generally cyclic reignition of the arc will be easy. So, for that reason this technology has, uh, has a popular uh, choice uh, for cyclic reignition of the arc. This thyristor is employed with magnetic core to generate a square current waveform. This a square current waveform is made uh, by providing a thyristor uh, which is employed with magnetic core which is used to generate this a square waveform. This a square waveform can have this time that means this is one a square waveform then this takes a time T1 or T i let this takes a time T double i let us. So, this this T i this time is called generally called dual time dual time this dual time sometimes can be equal or this dual time can be sometimes unequal. Depending upon this dual time this thyristor control or you can say with this a square wave from output uh, power supply is categorized that is called equal dual power source and another one is used as unbalanced or unbalanced dual power source. In case of unbalanced dual power source it is generate a dual period it is generate a waveform which have a two different dual. Let this is T i and let this is T i i. Always keep it in mind that here which one is positive and which one is negative in this waveform. Always keep it in mind this is generally negative part that is why this is connected to electrode negative E n it is represented as E n this represent negative and below this line part is called positive. Uh, this types of a square waveform power source is used for uh, oxide eliminating purpose this types of power source is used. Like this this E n part is used to uh, for welding pe uh, penetration this is for use for welding welding penetration and this is generally used for cleaning purpose cleaning or oxide cleaning purpose or ox uh, this I will explain in details once we will be in uh, actual welding process where these types of thing is uh, electrode positive electrode negative things is used. Next class I will discuss about uh, DC power source its categories and its detailing.